So this is part two of how I start every Rails app. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at the authentication pages and styling those using Tailwind UI. So um, I like to use Tailwind in all my projects and Tailwind UI is a fantastic resource for like pre-built components and things like that. So um, if we take a look here, they have a sign in and registration section. Um, we can go in there and see the various styles of sign in box. So I quite like this first one and we'll be copying that. So as you'll see, our device uh, sign in screens currently have no styling and we're going to um, style these up to look like the Tailwind example. So if we go across and we will open up our layouts auth.html and we'll just paste in this Tailwind code and we'll just indent that properly. And so we'll see this example requires Tailwind CSS forms plugin. So we'll open up our Tailwind config and add plugins and then we'll just install uh, Tailwind forms. So we'll close our Rails server down and run yarn add Tailwind CSS forms. And then if we start that back up again, that should all be running and we can get rid of that. The next thing is it requires updating your template. So we need to add this class to the HTML tag. And there's also a class then to add to the body tag. And that should be everything we need to do. So if we go ahead and reload, you can see um, we've got all our content here. We'll just need to update these inputs to look like the Tailwind ones um, and create some helpers for setting the title and stuff here. So um, we can go ahead into the new uh, template. And actually, if we go back to authentication and um, what I like to do actually is for the things like labels and inputs um, and the buttons as well is just set up a few helpers. So if I open up the um, application helper and then we can go in here and create a method called label class. Um, and then we'll do the same for input. And the same for, let's call it form button class. And then we can go into our auth file here and We'll just take these styles for label and put them in here. Then we'll do the same for the input. So go ahead, copy all of this. And we'll do the same for our button. So if we can find um, And this is it here. And then see if that. And so because I've removed some of the styles here, you can see these fields starting to revert. Um, but we'll just keep going with this example and we'll go into the new file. So we have our label here and we can come in and do class is label class and we'll do the same with the password field and then we can do input class for the email field and password and then the other thing is we need to get rid of these line breaks and we need to do a div with margin top of one to put these inputs in we can also just get rid of this class of field because that's no longer used. And then we can come on down to the button and we can say class is form button class. 
Um, we don't need this actions class either. So we can go ahead, reload that, and those inputs now are starting to look like how we want them. Um, the next thing is getting those moved up so that they're inside of this box. And we can go ahead into our auth template again, and we'll just grab the yield and the two flash alerts here, and we'll move these up. So we have um, this section at the bottom for social sign-in. We are just gonna get rid of that. And then we'll paste in our other elements here. So if we go ahead and reload, then you'll see the fields are now in the right place. The spacing on them is a wee bit off. Um, and then we also want to copy this remember me and forgot your password styling as well for this section. So um, we can go ahead and start adding some spacing. So I like to do that just on these divs here. So we can say class margin bottom six. And that looks better. And then we want to just copy the styling for these two across. So if we go back to auth and scroll up a bit, we should see in here, we've got our checkbox and our forgot password field. And we'll copy that across down to here. And then it's just a case of making the Reels kind of adjustments here. So we've got a forgot password from device and we want to just copy across as best we can. So um, first of all, it checks if device rememberable is enabled. And then if it is, we obviously have this div. Um, then we have our checkbox, which has a class, and we'll just copy that class across. And then again with the label, I think this uses slightly different styles than our other labels. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then if we reload here, We should now see that we've got that styling and we we'll just want to update our link for forgot password. So device has a uh, shared folder with links and then we can go in here and see the forgot your password one and just copy that across and we just want to replace that into this. And so we want this div to wrap the link. And then we just want to copy across this class for the link as well. And remove this line break. So if we save this now and reload, it should be looking just as it does in the Tailwind example. And the only thing else we'll need here is just a little bit of margin below this. So if we go in just here and add in margin bottom six as well, that should now look pretty good. Um, we maybe want slightly less margin around this section because I think in the Tailwind bit, there's a wee bit less. So actually it's maybe okay. We'll just leave that for now. And then we'll comment out our links include from down here because we don't want to show these again. The next thing we want to do obviously is our layout is fitting into this, this box but we want to be able to adjust the title up here. So we'll do that by using the content for helper. So if we go back to auth and 
and we'll go ahead and just delete the tailwind example form here. So we'll just delete all of this and then we can come up to the top here where we have our logo and h2 and paragraph tags. So these are the bits here that we want to say um, yield and pass it an option of auth header. And then we can say if content underscore for auth header. And then we can just copy or cut this out, go back to our new file. And at the very top, we can get rid of this login title and we can now say content for auth header and then pass a block and then paste in our code. And that looks pretty good. We'll see if and see if that works. And so now our form is starting to look like it should. And also if we just update this text to make sure it's working. So um, instead of sign in to your account, if we just say sign in. And so that's working well. And then start your 14 day free trial. And we just change that to um, create your account for free. And we'll want to go back to our device links file and look for the sign up one. We'll copy this and we can just edit this so it all fits in. So so we now have our check there that registrations are enabled. And then we we'll just want to copy across this class to the link so we can put this in here. And we can also copy across the text. So create your account for free. We'll just replace sign up. So we'll see if that and see if it works. Create your account for free. Yep. And if we click this, we should go to sign up, which we do. And you'll see now it's got this form around it. We just need to apply the same changes to the sign up form as we have for the uh, sign in. So I'll go ahead and do that really quickly here just to show you. Um, we'll need to do that for a forgot password form and all of that as well. But um, in this video, I'll just show you how to do that again quickly for sign up. So sign up is found in registrations new and we can go to our sessions new and copy across the header and then obviously we want to change this to um, create create your account and we can get rid of this check and we can go back to our links file and find the one for login and paste it in, copy across the class name. And we can say something like, have an account already, login. And we just want to remove this check. and then reload. Oh, I've added the wrong file here. Whoops, we'll copy this and just undo all of our actions there. Go back to our registrations and paste this in. And if we hit save, now that works. So we've got create your account, have an account already, log in, and you can flick between those two screens easily. So next then is just going through again all of the form fields and applying the same treatment to those. So basically going in, putting your margin bottom on each field, which we'll do quickly.
and then adding in the classes so we can say class form button class and then we can come up to the top again here and we need to do our margin top one and then also just putting in class of input class and then also on our labels uh, the class of label class so I'll go ahead and copy this onto all the labels first while removing these and then we'll go ahead and copy the input class one and put that onto all of the inputs And I don't think we need this autofocus because it's on first name already. And then here we are just going to move this minimum password length to the bottom so it's more like a hint and we can add class margin top one text small uh, maybe text gray 500 or something so it's not standing out too much and then again our margin top one wrapping the input And let's see how this looks. So we've got our first name, last name, email, password, password confirmation. And then we just want to get rid of that links bit at the bottom again. And so I think that's pretty good. Um, there's a few more authentication pages that we need to go through and style up like this, but um, you should have quite a good idea of how to go about that and um, obviously the only other thing we do in our layout is update the logo and we maybe just change all of these in the go uh, links to whatever the the brand color is um, for the application so um, I hope that was interesting and um, I hope you can see how powerful Tailwind UI is and once you create helpers and components and things like that um, you can style things up really quickly so um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And in the next episode, uh, part three, we'll be looking at the overall app layout after you've signed in.